but I wanted to talk about um, your is it called um, your new testosterone replacement company Primal we, Medical Group. Primal Medical. So, so tell us a little bit about that. So uh, Primal Medical Group, it's actually a general practitioner company. So so many people came to me and it was like, oh, my doctor's telling me to be vegan, but I know that's not good. But you know, I'm not doing the same research you are, so I don't really have the confidence to just tell my doctor, no, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I mean, that's probably a good idea. I mean, like you got to work with your doctor. He's in charge of your health. Don't tell him he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, even if he tells you something that you know is wrong, just go, okay. Uh, and, and so, uh, somebody was like, God, I wish there was like, I wish I had a doctor that like understood prioritizing protein and exercise and growing muscle and testosterone. And so I heard this from 500 people and I was like, okay, uh, you know, it's time, time to take some action here. Uh, so uh, it's a general practitioner company. We also do hormone replacement therapy. Um, but a breakthrough uh, is, is upon us. Uh, testosterone is about to change very much. And it was, it was very, very fortuitous. I was running an experiment where I was looking at so many problems with standard testosterone replacement therapy. So most people take an injection of testosterone once a week, or they split it. So they take two injections per week. The problem is your testosterone is high for multiple days, and then it's low for multiple days. Um, you're never supposed to have high testosterone when you go to bed. Your testosterone starts climbing when you wake up. It peaks, if you wake up at eight o'clock, it peaks at around noon and then drops off sharply. So now it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be in your system all the time. It needs to attach to the receptors that were stimulated uh, by exercise or doing all the other things it does, helping all kinds of other organs function. Um, now, you have to think that testosterone, because it exists on a circadian rhythm, meaning a day, sun up, sun down, basically, it really has nothing to do with the sun, it has to do with you know, when you're up and moving around and when you're asleep. So the negative side effects of testosterone or even people who use way more than they're supposed to and take unhealthy dosages, which is what we call steroid users, um, the problems that they run into really have to do not so much with dosage, it has to do with the time. So I was like, well, okay. Well, the time of the day they take it, you mean? Not the time of the day they take it, the time of the day it's up. Mm -hmm. It should only be up at the beginning of the day. It does its job at the beginning of the day. Then it goes down and you're fine. You have all the positives without any of the negatives when it goes down at night. And that's the natural circadian rhythm. So what I started doing was uh, I switched from testosterone enanthate or cypionate, which is normal. Uh, it's the ester that's attached to testosterone and how long it lasts. So that'll last like about a week in the body. Um, and that's an injectable. That's an injectable, right. Um, and that's really, the, the creams are like a thing for testosterone, but they don't work very well. Also, they tend to rub off on your partner. And, you know, if your partner starts like growing like beard hair, <laughs> she's going to be upset. Um, and that, there's a lot of stories about that. So uh, the injections, it's just the administration, the up and down, uh, I don't want to call it regulation because it's not regulated, it's exogenous. You're introducing it to the body. It's inappropriate, which is why our sex binding uh, globulin, sex hormone binding globulin, SHBG, goes up. It's not because of any certain dose of testosterone. It's because it's high when it's not supposed to be high, which is at night. So your body comes up with this binding globulin to basically, here's the testosterone, the binding globulin grabs a hold of the testosterone and makes it inert. So people get on TRT and it only benefits them for about the first two months and their SHBG goes up and it stops benefiting them. So what we need is to up and down regulate the exogenous introductions on a daily basis. So what I did was I, I've been on TRT since I was 28 years old. I had a bad uh, testicular injury 
uh, in rugby when I was in, you know, uh, just after I, I played a little bit after university. So, um, I decided, okay, I'm going to not do these two esters I've been doing. I'm going to find, uh, some testosterone suspension. So, which is no ester attached. So just raw testosterone. Um, and I'm going to take it in very small quantities daily. So small injections, most people can't even find testosterone suspension. You'd have to know somebody who owns a compounding pharmacy. Um, so I was doing 10 milligrams per day. So I went from like a normal dosage is like 150 milligrams per week. And people take that like in one shot. I was doing 10 milligrams per day. So I, I cut it more than half. So I went to 70 milligrams a week by doing it once per day. Everything started growing again everything started functioning better. And I was like, wow, this is interesting, but it's not very useful because no one's going to take an injection every day. Like it was interesting for the experiment, but wow, that's, that's a really tough sell. And it was like totally fortuitous that Primal came together. I was running this experiment and then a couple of companies introduced oral testosterone, which was, uh, it's, it's testosterone undecanoate, which is a different ester which behaves very differently when injected, but when you take it orally, it doesn't damage the liver. A percentage of it gets into the system and you can, it's only for a couple hours. So it's phenomenal. So, so now through Primal, Primal Medical Group, uh, we have oral testosterone. So uh, it's the type of TRT which never stops working. So you start gaining muscle, in the first two months, in forevermore. Uh, so I've, I've actually now been getting better responses uh, than I've ever seen because I've been on TRT since I was 28. And now it's like I just started. How long have you been taking this new form? Um, about six months. All right. Well, eight months with the suspension injections, and uh, then I switched to the oral. What, what about, I, I know um, people have concerns with cancers, like particularly about prostate and how testosterone can actually, uh, or, well, there's, there's, there's a few different things I've heard about it, but I know when you, if you do have prostate issues, then they, they, they basically reduce your testosterone or get rid of it as much as possible. But I had, I've got a friend locally who got very serious, almost died with it, and my father. And um, he was, you know, he, this guy here was talking about, well, actually, maybe that isn't the case. You know, maybe it's not the testosterone that's doing it. I don't know if you know anything about that at Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the biggest questions that people ask. There has never been a study that connected testosterone and prostate problems. It was a concern because testosterone can convert to estrogen, and one of the other byproducts of, of that process is dihydrotestosterone, DHT. DHT uh, attacks your hair follicles. We're both lucky enough to have that, that gene uh, and can also attach to the prostate causing prostate problems. Um, turns out that while, this, while the suspicion was worth looking at, it's been looked at and it's not, it's not a thing. Mm. So they're still, they still reduce it though, don't they, if you go to doctors now? They don't need to, but... Doctors do a lot of things they don't need to do. Mm. Um, they still prescribe statins. The entire, entire premise of statin drugs has been defeated, uh, yet they still do it. And what, what do you know with, with this being a new drug? Or Well, is it, is it a new drug? Or I'm just, the question I was going to ask is, like, what do you see as being any long-term potential downsides of uh, it sounds great but is it is it brand new and there's not a lot of been not a lot of testing been done on it or has there no there's a lot of testing that's been done they've been running trials for years uh before bringing this to market uh so they the the companies that did this they they went through the right channels with the fda because you know ultimately it's testosterone it's a controlled substance there's going to be a lot of questions they answered all the questions up front uh there are so a lot of the side effects that are traditionally associated with TRT uh, are non-existent with this protocol because there's no upregulation of, of dihydrotestosterone, uh, estrogen, no SHBG. Um, so the, o the only th side effect that traditionally was seen with testosterone replacement therapy and also is associated with the oral version 
is if you have high blood pressure, it'll make your blood pressure even higher. So um, now, I mean, somebody with high blood pressure, they can solve that problem in two weeks by stopping carbohydrates. But will they? <laughs> so, you know, once the patient does that, then they're qualified, uh, provided they have a low enough testosterone level that uh, they need it. You know, this is, this is all based on need. Like nobody just gets that prescription because they want it. Um, in fact, there's nothing beneficial about replacing something that doesn't need to be replaced. How do you, how do you know then, uh, I, I guess for people listening to this, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to go out and get that done, but do you want to do it? You know, how do you know whether you are ready for it or you should do it, uh, or not? Lack of libido, lack of energy, lack of focus, uh, loss of strength. Um, now, because the Western diet is the way it is, and especially with a lot of soy-based preservatives, uh, almost every male over the age of 30 has very low testosterone. And it, it tends to go down by generation. Uh, and I, I don't think there's anything, you know, atmospherically wrong or wrong with the way that we're reproducing. You know, like a lot of people have suggested some really crazy ideas. I just think we just eat garbage. That's the problem. Uh, and, um, you know, that's in a way going to be fixed. Like, I think uh, you know, part, part of the reason I'm connected with uh, Robert Kennedy and I did that, that interview is he's very concerned with our food. He knows that a lot of diseases are on a sharp rise and there's only one explanation, processed foods preservatives, chemicals that are going in our foods that we need to just get out of our diets. Um, so, but it doesn't matter. Like we're going to need testosterone replacement therapy because the damage has already been done to most of us. So um, I think this option is so much better. No needles. You can travel with ease. Like traveling on testosterone replacement therapy, like I don't know if you know anybody who has to deal with that, but like you have no idea when you land in Dubai and you have needles with you, like you're having like a three hour conversation with the immigration people because it doesn't matter what you say. They don't really want to believe you and they're not incentivized to be helpful. Um, so yeah, like I hated traveling with that stuff. Now it's pills and they, the prescriptions right on the bottle and they're like, okay, here you go. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I've, yeah. I've really, it's been a in, very interesting conversation, John. And um, Oh, one thing I want to add, for the people interested in the, testosterone, the oral testosterone, primalmedical.net. Okay. Yeah.